Hey, I'm Chad. Dude. And this is the long-awaited rabbit hole review. I know we've been away. Things have been changing. Look at Garrett's beard. What the fuck's up with that? Growing a beard. I think he, he's going to be a Starbucks barista at some point. I that think. was my yeah. summer goal. Grow this beard. Be <laughs> hipster as all fuck. Yeah, you can't beat that, right? Because I live downtown now, King Wester. It's just, you have to do it. Uh, anyway, we were, um, like I said, we've been off for a while, and what am I doing with these glasses on? Edit! <laughs> we're on the road now, coming yeah. to you live from Scarborough, Ontario, we're, we're, the rock and roll capital of Canada. We're in the bunker, the rock and roll bunker. I don't know if you can see behind us, but uh, I went to Ireland. I uh, went to Phil Lynott's grave, and I did an etching of his uh, his uh, gravestone there. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. I had to do it. So. Uh, what else is going on? Hey, uh, you know, a lot of traveling is going on. We've been uh, doing some little bit of travel, a little bit of drinking, a little bit of stupidity. We've gone to some shows. Many different countries. <coughs> and a bunch of shows. Yeah. Uh, the one that we kicked off the summer with was uh, actually Tom Petty. At Air Canada Centre, which has taken on added resonance uh, with his passing in the last week. That one hit me like uh, like a ton of bricks. Like yep. I, I've been a Petty fan for a long time, more so even in the last two three years. I I just really really got into a lot of his music, and I finally got to see him live, and it all made sense like you would not believe. And so for him to just pass away now it was like oh wow i'm so glad i got to see him and it 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 hurts my soul yeah for sure um for me i mean he was one of those guys that was always there but um he's one of those guys that when you got older you just sort of got it more you know mm -hmm. like it just sort of felt like, i don't know if it's just because the music's so timeless uh, you know but he's one of the few guys who just like he ages well like he just seemed to be more dignified like the kind of music he plays like it, he was just a guy who got up on stage plugged it in played guitar and sang and played his music and you can do that when you're in your 60s and your 70s or whatever yeah so he still looked the same and he still had the same amount of dignity there's not a lot of guys who you can who still do that and you go like that's still cool that's still great Maybe it's a shell of their former self yeah there's just but, a bunch of guys up there trying to make money to pay their rent. Yeah, T Petty wasn't that guy. No, he just did it. He just did his thing. He wasn't see too concerned about like what was cool at the time, you and know. he never followed any trends, which is why he never went out of style. And that's the huge key to being successful for an like an elongated period of time. For sure, Petty was uh, like I got into Petty. Uh, I think early '80s. I think I got into this Tom Petty. Maybe even the seventies, yeah. Because I, I liked it. I liked the, all the stuff from Dan the Torpedoes when mm -hmm. it was on the radio. I didn't go out and buy it. I was like, what, twelve? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I was into Kiss at the time. So what are you gonna do? Totally. <clears throat> but I still like that stuff. I tape it off the radio. Remember doing that, kids? Taping songs off the radio and you get mad at the DJ because he would talk over it. Yeah, but you didn't care because you know it was it was free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you didn't know any better. No. That yeah. was how you got free music back then. Now it's all free. Now the idea of paying for music is insane. Yes. Uh, but, you know, listening to Tom Petty, it was, uh, it, it brings me back. Every time I hear one of his songs, especially the older stuff, the swampy rock stuff that he did, oh, I love that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of, he kind of fell out of favor with me with the, when he sort of went kind of country. I wasn't really into it because I was, I was an 80s metal kid, right, for most part, so... I didn't get a lot of that, but at, when I went to see him recently, we went to see him recently. It all made sense. It all clicked. It was like, yep. holy shit! I'm singing every song. I'm loving singing every song, and there's not many people that can do that. I don't really realize like just how many massive hits he had that are like, kind of like in everybody's DNA. Mm -hmm. And even if you, he's one of those guys, that even if you're not a big fan, like you know, five of his songs by heart, kind of like Brian Adams exactly. or Phil Collins songs or something. Like they just come to you like, I want back. To... Everybody knows it. Everybody. Yeah, and I was singing along the ones, the ones that I didn't even particularly like as a. When they came out firsthand, I I wasn't a fan of free falling, but when that song came on. It lifted you up. Of course. It was great. Of course. There's a soaring chorus that li literally everyone in the building is singing along to. Like the ushers and the fucking beer vendors are just screaming it at the top yeah. of their lungs. You, you can't, can't help but feel it. You can't mm -hmm. help. It's it's the most uplifting thing. 
Like his music had a quality like that that you wouldn't believe. He understood how everybody felt. A lot of people just sings about sing about chicks and cars and you know getting some you know something on a Saturday night. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. No. I'm you know I'm a, I'm a huge Van Halen fan. That's what most of their songs were about. But. Yep. Yeah, but he had like another level to him for sure. A yeah. little more. And again, that speaks to you know growing older with dignity and. Yeah, you know, you can be a sixty-year-old man and sing those songs, and it, it still works, and it's it still resonates, and you know it looks it feels real. And yeah, you know, for us, it's yet another great that we lost. Yeah. Um, it's happening more and more often. It's going to continue to happen. Uh, those guys, you know. <laughs> if you get they, a chance to see acts like that, go out and do it. Yes. Because you'll regret it if you don't. Yes. And uh, I think we're going to look at uh, here one of his early, early hits. Uh, American Girl. It, it just kind of, I think it kind of epitomizes what <clears throat> he was all about early on. It, not necessarily later on, but it, it, even then. I think this is his first pretty big, big, big hit, hit yeah. kind of, and there's no real like video for it, so we found a clip of him performing it on an old show called Fridays, yeah, Fridays. which is a whole other uh, thing we can talk about. Yes. Uh, Chad, Chad especially. I don't remember it at the time. I've gone back and since watched it you know, online, whatever. It's uh, uh, a hugely influential show that featured some people who became big stars later. You were there in the beginning. You saw it when it oh, was... Oh, I, I liked it better than Saturday Night Live. It was on on Fridays, obviously. But, you know, they were on there. They did American Girl. Fantastic version. Is this a Rickenbacker? Yep. That's a, he was a huge, about guitars. He was a before. huge fan of the birds. That's why he played those. Oh man, he does a good version of a uh, feel a whole lot better on yeah. his first solo album. It's so good. It sound, you know, it's pretty much identical to the Birds version. Yeah. But for some reason, it's just, I just love it more than the Birds version, and I can't really understand why. But I, I do. I, I think he's the most honest. Like when he does something like that, is he, his he does it. It's honest. It's not somebody copying something, right? No. And the band that he had. Oh, that band is smoking. That is a rock band. They're all studio guys that have played with other people too, and, and written with other people. Who are yeah. some of the other people like they play with? Like uh, Mike Campbell has. Mike uh, Campbell, uh, like, well, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers pay, played with uh, Stevie Nicks, obviously on the Belladonna album. <clears throat> Big hit with "Stop Dragging My Heart Around," but uh, uh, they they backed up Bob Dylan. They uh, oh yeah, they he was in the Traveling Wilburys. Uh, ben Montench, the keyboard player, has played with everybody. Yes. He's a fantastic keyboard player. Mm -hmm. So tasty. And they, they're not sterile sounding like a lot of stadium studio musicians are. It just sounds very it's organic very loose. and nice. And it's just kind of like this ambiance thing. Like when I was younger, like I liked guitar players that played punchy riffs and, you know, they grabbed you by the balls and yeah. everything. And that's not what this is. And this is more of like kind of an atmospheric thing that. You know, again, I had to be older to kind of appreciate. There's nobody like him, and nobody sounds quite like him either. You, know, you got that kind of Bob Dylan thing, maybe, but no. like a better singer than Bob Dylan, <laughs> but a little bit of that. I remember when the Traveling Wilburys got together, I go, you could not slap four guys with more ridiculous voices together. No, but somehow that worked. <laughs> Some, somehow, yeah, well, five you of them. You got one guy that Jeff, mumbles, Jeff, one yeah. guy sings through his nose, <laughs> Jeff Linda sings like, oh! George Harrison singing like a hummingbird, yeah. or whatever, whatever, and Roy Orbison, who you know is never, nobody sounds like him, yeah. and yet it all worked. It's Bizarre. just perfect, um, and it, that that's the kind of thing that had to happen organically. Like they just got together and wrote and recorded that in like a week or something. Like there's no way you could sit down and think about that yeah. or put any thought into it. It just has to happen. You will never see anything like that again. That's the way music used to be, and now it's not like that. <laughs> No, and I'm not going to bitch about that. We're not going to get into that again. It's you know, <laughs> we, it, we tend things to do change. That. It's yeah. okay. It's fine. That was great. I'm glad we grew up in that era. Yeah. That's all. And this necessarily isn't our era, right? We grew up a little bit after it, but yeah. he was always relevant. He was always there when MV, uh, MVP, MTV first came along. He was one of the big stars because he kind of he kind of got it. He wasn't a, like a fan of doing videos mm -hmm. necessarily, but kind of got what that was and when he did the don't come around here no more video that was uh that was a that won him a lot of awards and 
Yeah, it was and, and again, quite he, epic. And and he had Dave Stewart wrote that song, Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics. Yep. And the band didn't even really like it. No. So, but uh, that was quite innovative, the video and the song. And it was, and again, considering that he came kind of came along before videos. He wasn't like Duran Duran, like who came of age, who was born in the video era. Yeah. He was before that, and he was like, oh, I got to do a video now? Okay. And he made this like weird video, where, which was unforgettable. Like, remember they were chopping up Alice in a cake? That was actually quite her? Co- was controversial, actually. They wouldn't play yeah. it on a lot of video shows because, you know, they were eating Alice, which was a cake. It was this girl's head as a, the rest of her body was a cake and everybody was all up in arms about that think about that now think about the stuff they do in videos now yeah. okay, come on maybe we should have played that video uh, <laughs> go watch it you have youtube it's yeah you phone. know you know you can watch anything you want nowadays just go find it yeah. don't, don't wait for us to tell you or, or do wait for us because we're pretty important we are and we're gonna be coming your way a lot more often so <laughs> And we don't know where from, actually, because look at us now. We're on the road. We're on the road. We come from very different locations every time. We're trying to hide from the police. Uh, I think we moved on to another video. Video's over. Learning to Fly. That was a good song. But you you get it. Tom Petty, if you you haven't checked out a lot of his older stuff, please do so. It is so atmospheric and so moody. Turn the lights off. Throw the headphones on. Smoke a big bowl if you want. I don't care what you want to do. Man. That will work. Yeah, <laughs> with Tom Petty, because <clears throat> it, it, it it happens and it, they make you feel good. One of the all-time greats. He gets it, and we saw him. You should have gone. <laughs> yes. Too late now. Yeah, you you're an idiot if you didn't go. No, I don't mean that. Sing it, Tom. <laughs> 